This is Mark and Michelle Hedges from Heal Your Autism. Mark, what are you going to make today? Uh, the recipe I'm going to do now is uh, chicken fried steak. Uh, some people call it country fried steak, but uh, I think around here in Oklahoma, Texas, Kansas, we call it uh, chicken fried steak. And uh, if you've grown up in this part of the Midwest, uh, you're used to chicken fried steak. You, it comes in sandwiches a lot of times or a big old steak dinner. Uh, and that has always been one of my favorite dishes. But the, the traditional recipe is uh, not GAPS legal. Uh, you, bread the, you bread a cube steak in flour, then an egg, and then in uh, uh, cracker crumbs. Well, that's fine, but all of that is gluten and all of that is wheat. So if you're not able to process that because you have an unhealthy gut, uh, then uh, chicken fried steak is not legal. A couple years back, it might have been three years now, I found a way to make it legal on the GAPS diet. And let me show you how I'm doing that. First of all, our main ingredient, uh, this is skirt steak I bought at the store where I work, Whole Foods. Uh, you can buy cube steak. In fact, cube steak is the traditional steak used for uh, chicken fried steak. Then, <clears throat> I'm using coconut flour uh, to uh, lightly bread the uh, steaks in. Then, I'll dip them in a little bit of egg, beaten egg. Then, in seasoned almond flour. I haven't seasoned either one of these yet, but uh, I'll show you how I do that. And uh, I'll show you how many eggs we use. Then what I'm going to do is fry them in a pan with lard. A little bit of butter for flavor. And probably some olive oil. Uh, to make up, uh, to have about half an inch or three quarters of an inch of oil. And then after we get done frying them, I'll keep them warm in the oven. We'll pour off the grease. Uh, and then what we'll do is we'll deglaze the pan with heavy cream because uh, uh, the cream gravy that usually goes with chicken fried steak is usually just milk and uh, a flour roux. And that's not legal on the GAPS diet either. Uh, so I'm going to make it out of straight heavy, reduced heavy cream, black pepper, and butter. So you'll see all of this. This is actually a simple recipe. So let's get started. <clears throat> First thing I'm going to do, I need beaten egg. So I'm just going to take three eggs. Can you see in there? Okay. I put the eggs away. Uh, let me wash my hands since I handled the raw egg. <clears throat> All right, now we are going to add a tiny bit of heavy cream for extra liquid in the eggs. One, two, three tablespoons, no more. All right, we'll set the cream aside because we'll need it for the cream gravy. <clears throat> A whisk. Beat that real well. You don't want to be able to see separate egg and separate cream or separate ye uh, egg yolk and separate egg white. You just need it all incorporated together. There we go. <clears throat> and we'll set that over here for now. <clears throat> now, what we need to do, I'm going to grab another plate. We are going to season the steak. Take a little bit of salt. Sprinkle it on one side, flip it over, sprinkle on the other.
This is Mark's birthday dinner. His birthday is tomorrow. Yeah, this will be a very nice birthday dinner with some uh, well-cooked green beans and some uncured bacon to season those green beans. This would be perfect. <clears throat> It'll be perfect anyway. All right, let me finish seasoning these pieces of steak. Then we'll get to breading. Actually, what we'll start doing as well is heating up the pan more because we want to be able to bread these and then start frying them. <clears throat> Need to wash my hands real quick. <clears throat> All right, I'm going to turn uh, the heat on the pan up to a four for right now. <clears throat> then we'll turn it up a little bit more once it comes time to. Uh, <clears throat> cook. We need to season the almond flour. Uh, the almond flour needs to have some seasoning. The coconut flour does it. There's not going to be much of it on the steak. Uh, but with the, uh, with the almond flour, that's different. So what we'll do, let's uh, we'll set the egg out of the way for now. Let's put one teaspoon and that's about another teaspoon in the flour, a little extra. Because this is all about flavor, not science. <clears throat> then let me get a fork. And we'll mix it all in. Grab a spoon. And let's see how seasoned it is. Mmm, that's well seasoned. What we'll do is we're going to add black pepper. Let's see. We'll pause for him to find his black pepper. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Now we're back with the black pepper, and I'm just going to grind some up into the flour. I smell it. Mm-hmm. All right. That'll be good enough for now. We'll mix it in a little bit. All right. We've got our steaks seasoned. So here's what we're going to do. Thank you, camera woman, for uh, bringing the egg to the cutting board. All right. <laughs> so what we'll do, now, we've got the pan heating up. It's higher than it was. We're going to turn it to five, to medium heat. And then, we're going to add some olive oil. Let's just cover the bottom of the pan. There's that going to heat up. I'm going to grab a large spoon. <clears throat> Olive oil and animal fats take higher heat than things like butter. 
So we're going to add There we go. <clears throat> okay. We're going to let all of that melt. Turn it up a tiny bit. I smell of rosemary in that. Mm -hmm. There's a rosemary extract in the lard, uh, which that's okay for me. I don't mind it. But if you don't, uh, you may need to find some lard that doesn't have any extracts or preservatives in it. <clears throat> okay. We're going to start breading. Because we need to start frying here in a minute. Take a, a piece of steak and dip it in the coconut flour on the ends. Shake it off. Then dip it in the egg. Let it drain just a little bit. Then take it and set it one side down. <clears throat> you keep one hand dry so that you can handle uh, your steaks after they're breaded. Let that drain. Okay, there you go. And then what you'll do, Turn it over, and let's turn that down. Turn the fan on. The uh, hood fan, the vent. Put a little bit of almond flour on top. And let's see how we're doing here. There's one piece in the hot oil. And we're going to stand here and keep an eye on it. We can go ahead and bread other pieces. see we're cooking pretty quickly. I'm going to reach in here for a fork. Nice. That is a nice golden brown. is we're going to line one of these skillets with paper towels. Now we will pause as Mark makes the rest of these and then we will get to the gravy. Uh, as I'm frying these, uh, a couple of things to mention. Because this is almond flour, it doesn't have the gluten uh, to build up like wheat flour does. Wheat flour makes a much better crust because of the gluten. Uh, and because it uh, fries better, uh, almond flour has kind of a weak crust, so it's going to come apart uh, as you cook it at least a little bit. What's holding the almond flour together right now really is the egg that we dipped it in. And uh, we're getting a little bit golden brown on this one. I double dipped 
uh, I double bread it, I should say, uh, this one, and I'm going to double bread the rest of them to see how well they come out. Alright, here's how we double bread. We'll take it and again start it in coconut flour, in egg, let the egg drain off, then dip it in almond flour. You want to push it into the almond flour a little bit to get the get it breaded. Then shake it off back into the egg. Let it drain. Then back into the almond flour for the last time. Coat it with a little bit of extra almond flour. Then, what we're going to have to do, this is starting to look done. Yep, we're a little browner than we should be, but that's alright. What we'll do, into the oven, this is a 250 degree oven that I preheated before I started cooking the steaks. We'll take this steak out and we'll put it here. Get extra breading out. And we'll come back in a minute. Okay, we have finished cooking all of the steaks. Uh, I'll show you them there in the oven, keeping warm. <clears throat> I'm going to bring them out so you can see what they look like. There you go. They're a little darker. Almond flour is going to turn out a little darker than wheat flour when you uh, brown it like that. But it still tastes good. It tastes very good. Yes, it does. I'm going to go ahead and put these back in the oven, let them keep warm. <clears throat> then, this is the pan that we use to cook the steaks in. We're going to pour all that off. There's no reason to use that. Mainly because it's burned. Then what we'll do is we'll use this this is all uh, ground almonds that have collected in the bottom of the pan and burned. <clears throat> so we're going to get most of that out of there. We don't need all of it out of there, but let's put it back on the burner. <clears throat> let's turn the burner back on. Let's do four. Then here's what we're going to do. <clears throat> Heavy cream is going to be the base uh, I haven't decided whether heavy cream is good on the gaps or not. I think the book says it is not. Uh, because cream, while it's about half fat, it's also the other half is milk, which means lactose. So for those of you avoiding dairy-free, or, or doing dairy-free, this isn't it. So uh, you could just uh, put butter on top of your steak and go with that. Melt some butter, that would be fine. Uh, but uh, heavy cream is not dairy free, not strictly speaking. Okay, so here's what we're going to do. We've got our pan. I'm sure it's hot by now. We're just going to add, this was about half of one of these containers. Is that half a pint? Yep, yeah, that was about eight ounces, about a cup. This, I'm going to add. tiny bit more. That leaves about a cup left. I put a cup in, so that's about two cups. This we can put back in the fridge. We're going to turn the heat up a little bit because we want this to reduce. And reduce, what that means is you're cooking the water out of it to concentrate it and thicken it up. Uh, I'll show you how thick it should be when it gets there. It should coat the back of a spoon easily. Uh, and you can, it's uh, quite apparent when it does coat, 
the back of a spoon. So uh, I'll show you that spoon test uh, okay. when we get there. We'll be back in a minute. All right, we're back with the chicken fried steak recipe on HealYourAutism.com. Uh, Michelle behind the camera, me behind the stove. So we've reduced the cream for the uh, cream gravy, and I told you I'd show you how thick it should be. It should coat the back of a spoon. Here we have a spoon. That's how thick it should be. And you see it's hardly running at all. It's fairly thick. You run your finger through it, and it holds the ridges and the place where you ran your finger through the back. That's how thick it should be. So what we're going to do, pull it off the burner. <clears throat> we're going to season it now. <clears throat> what you almost always find in cream gravy is black pepper. <clears throat> So, we're going to add quite a bit of black pepper to the gravy. Think that's enough? No, it's not enough. More. Alright. What we're going to do now Whisk in this black pepper. See how you can see the black pepper in the gravy? You can adjust it to your taste. I mean, you don't have to put in this much, but uh, it really does make for an excellent flavor. There we go. Now, let's whisk that in. Then, let's grab a spoon. And taste it for black pepper. You can definitely taste the black pepper. <laughs> okay, now <clears throat> we gotta we have to add salt. Season it with some salt. You don't need nearly as much salt. About how much salt was that? That was about a table uh no, it was about two teaspoons. But always season it to taste. No matter what a recipe says, if it tastes bad to you, it's wrong. All right, now we need to taste it for salt. Mm, that's perfect. Is it spectacular? It's spectacular. <clears throat> taste it again. Yep, beautiful. Actually, what we might do, that's thickened up a little bit. So let's add, <clears throat> nope, instead, let's add a tiny bit of cream to it. <clears throat> that was about a tablespoon. Let's whisk it again. Because this is an art, not a science. It is. Grab another spoon. We have a dishwasher, so let's try this yeah, again. Yeah, me. Hmm. Okay. Uh, got a little salty. So let's add a little bit more cream. You make mistakes. If things are a little salty, you can always add a little bit. <clears throat> more liquid. More liquid. And then, if you need to thicken it up, what you can actually do is add one of the coconut flours or almond flours, and that'll help thicken it up. All right, let's see where we're at now. See, now that's kind of thin. Uh, 
we're going to add <coughs> a little bit of coconut flour and a little bit more cream still a tiny bit too salty <coughs> I can live with that. Okay. Now you had raw meat in this. Why is this okay? I had raw meat in what? In the coconut. Oh, you're going to cook it again to thicken it up. So that'll bring it above 145 degrees to kill anything that was in there. Back on the burner and bring it to a simmer. All right, we'll be back. Mm -hmm. Okay, we're finally back. This is the plate up and presentation, and um, I'll show you what we do here. Uh, let's take this, seems to be the nicest one out of the batch. Again, the crust doesn't adhere because it's not a flour crust, but it'd still be good. What we'll do is we'll cut it in strips. Slide your knife under it. Then here's what we'll do. <coughs> Here's our gravy. Because we added coconut flour to it to uh, correct how much salt I put in it by accident, we'll just ladle gravy over it. The gravy is going to be a little grainy because of the coconut flour, but that's okay. And that is a chicken fried steak. Looks almost exactly like the one you get. Uh, uh, at a restaurant here made with a flour crust and everything else, but uh, this is GAPS legal. Uh, and except it's, for the cream. Well, that's right. I'm sorry, except for the cream. Uh, but uh, aside from that, if you're in the full GAPS diet, you can probably do a little bit of cream. Thanks, Mark. Thank you. <laughs>